Today's video comes from a question in the comments. Game Shenanigans asked, can you talk a little bit about what it would be like to pivot from a related mid-career position into the gaming industry? In this case, they're a technical product manager and they're worried that maybe they'll get bumped back to being a beginner or entry level and, well, be broke. This is a very good concern and there are a lot of interesting differences, some really great benefits for the game jump, I think that would probably make it more than worth your while, and a couple possible negatives, and a couple crazy things as well. So today I want to talk about all of those. Before we get started, the Ultimate Game Dev course is now live, and the Early Bird offer will only be available for the first 24 hours. This year we've added tons of new content, including courses and assets, and since we're backed by both Unity and Serenix, you'll also be receiving a 3 month Unity Pro license along with a 1 year Odin Inspector Enterprise license. For those of you who don't already know, the Ultimate Game Dev course is a massive bundle where Thomas Brush and I have put together all of our courses, combining over 160 hours of the best educational game developer content that we have. The courses are designed to take you all the way from beginner to pretty advanced development, and in the process you'll learn how to build a variety of game types like 2D, 3D, RPGs, top-down, first, and third-person shooters. And I'll teach you how to write good, clean, scalable code with good workflows to keep you on track while we're at it. On top of this, you'll learn how to master 2D and 3D art for your games using Photoshop and Blender for your 3D modeling. The course will also take you through how to successfully launch and market your game, as well as how to secure funding for your game before it's even finished. When you're done with the course, you'll have the skills to successfully build and launch your own games. Make sure to grab your seat before they run out and get the awesome early bird hoodie free if you sign up in the first 24 hours. Now I want to start with the part that was called out in the question, because the first thing that you're going to notice when you make a career jump is almost always going to be the pay change. Now the pay change is very likely to be a drop depending on what it is and where you're coming from, but it doesn't always have to be. Now if you're a programmer who's working in the web space or enterprise space and you make a jump over to game development, if you don't have any game development experience at all, you might expect to see your position kind of drop down maybe from a senior level to a regular level or from a regular down to a junior level. And you might see as much as like a 25% pay cut there. That is, of course, not always the case. There are plenty of times where you can just make a complete lateral move, even make a position jump down, and then keep the pay the same. I've seen it happen more than once, so I wouldn't necessarily be too concerned about that, but if you are doing something super high paid and you want to make the jump into game development, be very careful that you at least look at what the salary ranges are and what you can make so you know if it's realistic. You don't want to go from you know making half a million dollars as a doctor into making $100,000 as a game programmer or something or whatever the numbers end up being. Of course, look at your numbers totally varying and just using some wild, crazy numbers for... Uh, I guess for impact. But yes, there is a potential for a drop in pay, but that's not always the case. I've seen plenty of people make a lot more money as game developers or game programmers than enterprise programmers. And while that's not always the case, sometimes they're, they're equal, there are a lot of other big differences. And now I kind of want to dive into some of those because while it's possible that you might not make as much money, your job is probably going to be a lot less stressful. Now this, of course, it's gonna vary from place to place, but one of the things that I've noticed a lot from working at big enterprise places and working at game companies, big and small, actually on both sides, is that with the enterprise applications and the enterprise projects and things going on, if there's, if everything's going fine, it's nice and smooth and easy. There's, there's nothing, like it, it's a relatively chill pro job. But as soon as there's a problem, these things become like a big problem. All of a sudden there are vice presidents and presidents and all kinds of people jumping in and meetings being called to fix emergency issues that are costing the company hundreds of millions of dollars or maybe it's just hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever it is. But the problems tend to be very expensive, very urgent, and very dramatic. And when you're dealing with game development, that is rarely the case. Outside of your initial launch time, there are very few times where you're going to see a really high stress environment. Right before launch and right at launch, 
That's pretty much it. Other than that, it's usually a lot more relaxed. And there are some good reasons for this. One, of course, the fact that you can't lose the company nearly as much money, nearly as fast. It's possible, but it's very, very difficult to make a single screw up that loses the entire game company a bunch of money. And it's also nearly impossible to accidentally kill somebody or get the company sued. You're not going to do something that causes a train to go flying off a bridge or some random crap or a car to crash into a tree, which reminds me like I would never want to work on the crazy stuff like self-driving cars because it just seems so stressful to me that all of the the thoughts of what goes wrong or what happens if something goes wrong versus in a game if something goes wrong okay somebody lost their item and we can fix that if somebody's car crashes into a tree I don't know how to fix that and I honestly I, I'm not brave enough for that kind of stuff. Now I want to make a jump to something positive and talk about my favorite part of being a game developer, and that's being able to see the excitement on players' faces or the really just the thrill that people have when you release something. If you're working in enterprise and you release out a new application or an update for an application, most of the time, nobody's going to care. Your manager might care. Maybe there's one person on the other side who's like, the other team is like, oh, well, that's cool. Now can you do this other thing? You release a game update, you're going to get hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who are really excited, logging in, racing, crashing your servers because they want to play the game and they're really into it. And then you get to talk to these people later. You go to game dev events and you meet lots of people who've played the games and they'll tell you all of their favorite things about it. And it's just a really exciting experience. It's something that I've never seen replicated in enterprise it probably does happen for you know maybe people who made twitch and a, a couple other like really big things but in general most people that are using enterprise software that's not like publicly facing giant stuff um nobody really cares that much nobody gets excited with games people are very excited people are very happy and they'll often tell you just how happy they are. And it's one of my favorite things about game development. What about the work environment though? Well, that's also quite a bit different. I've worked in a lot of enterprise places, Intel, Qualcomm, they were very strict, um, not super strict, but everybody kind of followed the same standards. Everybody was wearing similar business-like attire. Some people were in suits and you kind of tell who was doing what based on what they were wearing. But everybody's kind of dressed up, everything's all well lit and uh, just, plain it looks very much like an office at any of those places they look like offices with uh, workshops and labs a very very simple um standardized type thing the kind of thing that you would see on a tv show the kind of thing that uh, the show severance reminds me of not that they were bad places or anything but the uh the layout and the look certainly reminds me of that game companies way different i mean a game companies you, what i well, put it this way I never at, at Intel or Qualcomm saw any uh, cubes that were covered up with uh, and made to look like a dungeon with doors and gates on them or highly decorated areas where the whole thing was completely themed around some game or some other theme. Um, I never saw people showing up in pajamas to work at those places. In a game company, you're going to see all kinds of things that are, I guess, just uh, it's a lot more laid back. It's a more relaxed environment. It's the kind of place where people are going to care mostly that you're able to do your job, you're able to get things done, and that's about it. You don't have to put on as much of a show or a public face for the executives and CEOs, at least at the ones I've been at. I'm sure it varies, but I know there are lots of, a lot of my friends who worked at places like law firms doing code, and they got to go in in suit with a tie all buttoned up to go sit there and write code. I used to go in and, you know, best case i've got a hoodie on and some shorts <laughs> that, that's that was dressed up for me so the the environment is very different but the people are also very different as well you're going to find that in game companies if you're into games and you're into you know playing them and you like video games which i guess you probably are if you're at a game company so is everybody else there or at least almost all of the other people you might find one or two people there or maybe five to ten percent that don't really like games that much they just really like programming and they really like art and this was kind of a way to take those skills and do something with it but most of the people there are going to be very into gaming video games and the entire industry they're going to have a lot of things that you want to talk about and kind of relate with them and bond with outside of work so when you have like lunch conversations they're not just going to be about work they're going to be about work but also about the other things that you guys share in common there gonna be a lot more things that you share in common i'd say i've made a lot of friends at all of the companies i've worked at but by far I've made way more at the game companies just because there's so many more people who just have similar interests and want to 
do similar things. We we'll play board games at lunch or play uh, video games after work together. Lots and lots of that stuff. So you're going to find that a lot, at least in my experience, a lot more in the game companies. You're also going to hear lots of crazy stories and stuff too, though. There are a lot of things that would I don't think it never would have happened at a place like Intel or Qualcomm. Lots of stories that I heard that were kind of crazy and over the top of people doing um, things that you would think would get you fired, but then they end up you know, being promoted somehow or something. And I mean, I can't think of any place that wasn't a game company where we had big barbecues with beer on a regular basis just in the office or where people had you know, a liquor cabinet inside of their office just ready to have a drink at whatever time if, if they needed to. And you know, it was definitely, like I said, a very different, much more laid back environment and a lot of fun. Now, on that topic, I, I kind of wanted to mention that one of the things that I've noticed too with game companies is that there's a lot more kind of out of work bonding, a lot more doing things outside the office where it's not just like at lunchtime, it's not just you know right after work. It would be things where people are really getting together and setting up group activities around those um, those fun things. One of the things that really pops into my head and uh, it was a, a very big one for me is we'd play um, weekly Magic the Gathering nights at Brad McQuaid's house. We'd go over there every Friday night and play a round of cards or maybe you know, we'd get like three or four games in. Sometimes we'd get one or two games in. Depending on how many people showed up, it could get really big and long and slow. But it was a lot of fun and it was um, it, it was a good way to, I guess, make friendships and build stuff up. But we also talked a lot about work and made plans and did lots of other things outside of there from going to those th those events. And, or, and I say events, but really it was just like, fun time with friends that we would go to all the time. And and I found that that happened only with the game companies. I never had that kind of an experience outside of the game companies. Um, I have with, you know, friends that weren't in the companies, but not just like the starting in there. So I, I think that that's probably like the, the biggest thing for me. I mean, that and really seeing people's faces and seeing them get excited. But there was one other thing that I wanted to just make sure to mention, because I think it might be important for anybody who's looking to switch and that's that the hours in game companies not always but often tend to be pretty different um in enterprise companies are usually relatively strict it's like these hours you know starting at eight or nine and off at four or five or whatever it is you know depending on your area but it's kind of been the standard and relatively strict from what i've seen at game companies most people seemed to start later. I saw a lot of people, like maybe 30% of the company that would come in around 10 o'clock in the morning and then work until seven or, or later at night. I have no idea why that is, but I know that it's relatively common. It's probably just because a lot of gamers are night owls and they, they stay up all night like, a, like my kids. So, and like I used to when I was younger. So that probably has something to do with it. And of course it's not uh, definitely not required, but it is something that I've noticed that it's a, uh, a little bit more flexible. People are working different hours and, and not quite on that um, that strict schedule as long as they're working all, some overlapping core hours. Anyway, I wanted to cover the differences. I hope that this was somewhat helpful. If so, please hit thumbs up. If you got ideas of stuff that I missed, which I'm sure I did, please drop a comment down below because I think that and more info is better than, uh, than less info. So if you got something, please drop it down there. And thanks again. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to check out the Ultimate Game Dev course by clicking the link in the description. This offer is limited to 150 seats, and if you sign up in the first 24 hours, you'll get the awesome early bird hoodie included for free.